Okay, I'll just start. Hi, my name is Jana mazurkiewicz meisteros and I'm the founder of the Yiddish Arts and Academics Association of North America. It's a big pleasure to have Dave, uh, our Yiddish teacher and a uh, member of our team, uh, teach us more Yiddish today. And um, please share all your Yiddish knowledge with us. Let's start all night learning with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So take it away from here. Yes. All right. Um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be learning together. Um, I will just very quickly say a few words about myself and then I'll begin talking. Um, I'm Dave. My name is Dave. I live in Chicago. My parents are here in the audience. Um, I've been learning Yiddish with intention for about six years and teaching for almost two. And I'm realizing that my focus is to welcome people into Yiddish and my focus on making newcomers feel welcome um, to learn. And it's a yeah. real honor and a pleasure to be with Yana as an organization that's trying to really make Yiddish uh, hip and cool and accessible and teaching it to another generation that really we're finding they thirst for Yiddish kites. They thirst for something, a way to be and feel Jewish. And for a lot of them, Yiddish, the language is the in um, for them being Jewish adults. Um, this class assumes no prior Yiddish education and it's my responsibility and um, it's my responsibility as a teacher to make everyone feel comfortable and that you can stop and ask a question no matter what it is and there will never ever be any type of how can you not know that when it comes to Judaism because Judaism is so old and big and nobody is born knowing anything so um, I don't want to take anything for granted of someone's previous uh, upbringing or religious background, but I want to stress 100% that there is um, any time you can always stop and ask a question. And at the same time, I never want to second guess anyone's lived Jewish experience to say something like, I've heard it pronounced this way, or my father says this word, I'm just one Jew with one opinion, so I never want to second guess anyone's, you know, individual knowledge and experience. So with that being said, I want to create a warm and Hamish and cozy um, environment, even though we're just yelling into our laptops. Um, so what I want to do is to elevate Yiddish and to really set aside the intention that we are learning and we are setting aside time to do learning. And a way to do that is to kind of bookend, as you will, our learning with a blessing. And, Dave, yes, Dave, please. it's Roberta. Before you start, could we see your beautiful face? Because you, the way your camera is angled, we only see oh. half of it. Uh, <laughs> Other way, yeah. Like this? No, that's worse. Like this? There we go, okay. All right. Nice to I meet you, Karen. <laughs> I can't see you. I can just see the text. Um, so I'm just going to take it for granted that the Here seeing part is. But thank you. It's, cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's very disarming. Um, the blessing for learning, as we are to say in Yiddish. Dloit bistu reboino shel olam, unzer got der kenig von der Welt, was er hot uns geheilig mit seiner mitfus. Und befeuern sich zu lernen in der Red von Teure. Amen, the Amen. And one of my favorite things about teaching Yiddish is that finally I can talk like this with the sing song type of intonation in the voice that we all kind of associate. So, um, what we're going to learn tonight, uh, with God's help, is kind of a handful of expressions, idioms, insider jokes, and that we're going to kind of learn to 
unpack them and learn them together and see them used in um, example sentences. And a lot of my references always kind of go back to my favorite, my favorite thing is the Simpsons. So a lot of this always has Simpsons uh, references. So I hope you are as amused by them as I am. So we're gonna go, I'll show you how it works and you'll kind of see the formula for the learning. The first thing we will do is have a technical difficulty. Okay, and you will see a word on the screen up top as it's written in Yiddish and underneath as it's transliterated into um, Latin letters. So we can read it even if we don't have uh, the, we can't read the Hebrew. So this is balabatish. And you can kind of say it to yourself, you can say it out loud, balabatish. And for those of you who might be in the know of some way, um, you may hear the word balabos um, ringing when you hear balabatish, this word. And you think balabos, oh, that's the boss, that's the person who's in charge. So what's this ish? This is kind of making it an adjective to describe something. And you can know it to mean stylish, mature, proper. You can think of someone in a judicial robe as being very balabatish. You know, think of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, as that imagery of being mature and put together. And then it's also something like this, you know, this is really the power look of the times of dated or not, this entire image is peak balabatish. The suit, the giant mobile phone, the stance, it's all very balabatish. So you can got to get a sense of the style, you know, even though this is how we thought it was 30 years ago, balabatish. Um, this word is very useful and um, fun to say, it's dafka. You kind of get that, not quite a V, not quite an F, you get dafka. And dafka is a word that means specifically or deliberately. Or if you wanted to think about it in English, um, just so, you know, just to, to do something um, on purpose. And if anyone here in this Zoom room has a cat, maybe you have a cat at home and you might identify with this. Seems like my cat does this davka to annoy me, just to annoy me. So that kind of gives you a sense of the word davka. Um, so that's kind of the format of how this class is gonna work. But I want to, since we are learning in a group and um, we're all at the computer, I want to make sure that we have time for questions and that someone can just stop and say, excuse me, can you repeat? Can you explain? Um, so I kind of tend to stop a little more on purpose to give everyone a chance who has questions because God forbid someone falls behind. Um, this word is epis. And you can see there's two options for pronunciation, also, you know, both very close, epis and epis. You know, I, I shake your hand from afar if you can hear the difference. And if you like the differences, this is merely a dialectical variation of Yiddish. Um, sometimes we say the joke in Yiddish is, you know, every neighborhood, every block has its own um, pronunciation or its own grammar. Um, but epis is, means something, somewhat, any kind of. And it can also be used in an exclamation to say like, wow, what a something. That really is something, as we say in English. So we can say, it can kind of have this filler meaning of just give me epis to snack in, I don't care, something, epis. So you can see it kind of just means whatever it needs to mean at the time. Just give me epis, I need to write. But you can kind of see it used in this way, like, you know, now this is epis a perm costume. You know, now this is something. We were, you know, calling it something the same way we do in English in an elevated type of way. That is something. Thus is epis a perm costume. And this person is dressed up as the nation of Brazil. 
So everyone, that's what Brazil looks like. Okay. So let's um, even just if you even, oh, sorry. Even if you don't know this word, you can kind of maybe get a sense that it's not a very positive word. A let uh, maybe just has a little sound like you just know it's maybe an insult, maybe it's something not so good, and you would be right if someone called you a let. And a let is a joker or just someone that always has a comment to say. They always have something, you know, usually unwarranted or something really pointless to add to a conversation. Um, they don't take anything seriously. And as we can see, this word comes from Hebrew, from Lush and Koydish. So it's the plural follows let's in, as it would in Hebrew. So a let is, this is a let. This is Krusty the Clown. You can say the new employee at work is such a let. They don't take anything seriously. They're always just joking around or, you know, never have anything serious to contribute. A let. This one's kind of fun. Um, Yiddish is really, you know, people say Yiddish is expressive. You know, I think all languages can be expressive. But something that I'm always happy when I find features of Yiddish that I recognize in my own language when there's automatopoeia, which is when a word sounds like the word that it sounds like. You know, think of crash and splat and words of that nature. And this word is trombanic. And maybe anyone who has the, the, the mindset of hears, they recognize Nick to mean, you know, oh, that's like someone that does something maybe. And a trombanic is, it's a technical tip, a freeloader, a parasite, a bum, a freak a lazy person. And what you can listen for when you hear this word trombamic is the word trombone. And imagine someone that just makes a lot of noise, says a lot of things, but doesn't really do much of anything. Much like a trombone will just, you know, this is someone that's just going on like a trombone, a trombamic. And the ultimate trombamic in this case is Otto. When Otto moved in with the Simpsons, he was a very, he was major mooch. You know, he accepted a collect call getting, you know, I don't know the last time anyone had a collect call, but Homer's yelling, you trombanic, you know, you sponge, you mooch. A vep. And a vep, if you had to think another way of, is this a good word or is this an insulting word? You'd be more inclined to think that sounds a little insulting, and you'd be right. A vet is a uninteresting, boring person. And you say a vet, think of vet as vapor, and just vapor coming out of someone's mouth, and it's just the most boring, uninteresting, you know, you can imagine. And this person you call, oh, what a vet. You know, in this example, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. On my nine hour flight, I sat next to some vet who talked my ear off about beet farming. You know, going on and on and on. Um, so I've done a handful of words. Does anyone have any questions so far before I get too comfortable? We have uh, Kainahara 14. Students. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Trombanic. Is that related to our president? Trombanic? Well, not really. Because, yeah, I think, I think uh, he would fall into another category. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too, too gentle. Uh, all right. I like this word, yoitsi. And yoitsi is a word that means to fulfill a obligation, in this case, a religious obligation, but in the minimal, minimal sense. You did just the bare minimum to be considered that you have fulfilled your obligation of whatever mitzvah you are referring to. Um, so I think you might get a sense of the word from this two examples here. Yotzi. 
even though I'm on a no carb diet for Shabbos, I'll have a little bit of challah just to be yoitzi. Just to be, okay, I had some challah on Shabbos. Despite me being on a no carb situation. But here it's also kind of used, you can kind of see in this more delicious way. Every time I travel, I always call my mother when I arrive just so I can be yoitzi. And this is to like, just so mom can, she can have peace of mind. I fulfilled my requirement. She knows I'm okay. She knows I landed. So just to be Yoitsi, call, you know, call your mom when you, when you land. Okay. This one is maybe the favorite one of, of the class so far. We kind of peaked uh, early, but this word is a manana nick. A manana nick. And you can hear the word mañana from the Spanish tomorrow. And you can hear that nick, you know, from trombane nick. Or if you have the word beat nick or peace nick or no good nick. So a mañana nick is someone who's always putting things off. And this couldn't be more like delicious Yiddish than, than, than it gets of a blending of a Spanish word it's very well known in English, and this suffix, the Slavic suffix of nick, of uh, one that characterizes. So a manana nick is always someone that says, I'll do it later, I'll do it tomorrow. A manana nick. I asked my roommate to clean the kitchen, and they said, I'll do it tomorrow. What a manana nick. When I found this word um, in the joy of Yiddish, I was just like beyond beyond happy when I found this word. It was very gratifying to find Mignana Nick. Okay, Blote. Blote is the most mild swear we have in Yiddish, and it's about as mild of a swear as I'll teach us today. Um, blote means mud, and it has this figurative, uh, yeah, right, as if, shock disbelief, it can be referred to something being a big mess, as in mud. And what I kind of like about blote, about mud, is that it was kind of the great equalizer between Jew and Gentile in Eastern Europe. When you think of the, the shtetl, you think of Eastern Europe, and you just think of mud. Um, at least that's something that I, I imagine from what I have read. Um, so mud was kind of the equalizer between two peoples. And to some degree, I don't know how or why, but it came to mean, yeah, right, of mud. And oh, look at this surprising. This is Lisa Simpson walking through some mud. Blocked it. Matsev. So it sounds like matzah, but it's matzev with this vase at the end, matzev. And matzev means situation. And I think you'll get a sense of the word situation in the next slide. What's the sushi matzev in Kansas or Nebraska? Like what kind of sushi do they have there? What's the situation of which one can get sushi? Um, what's, the, what's the matzev over there? You know, what kind of, what's the situation? I imagine maybe it's okay. I don't know. But what's the matzah? What's the situation? Der Tam. Uh, der Tam means, a Tam is literally taste. Um, it could also kind of mean essence, or it can mean something like, oh, this just has no Tam. Like, this has no, like, I used to say that. It has no, it has like nothing to it. There's nothing going on here. Um, it has no tom, like there's no point. There's no substance. Um, and it has nothing usually, can have nothing to do with flavor taste. Just, you know, it can be anything. It can have just no tom, just no, it's hard to translate sometimes, but I love this struggling feeling. It just has no like, ah, there's just nothing going on. Um, so quite literally, this food has no tom. But you can say that about 
you know, a, a piece of artwork, you know, about a play, about theater, about a situation, you know, there just has nothing of substance going on for it. Although if something is rather delicious, as we'll say, you know, in the way of food, a tam fun gan Eden. And God Eden may sound a little like, oh, Garden Eden, oh, a taste of paradise. And this is something that's actually very delicious. This is pina coladas, this is, uh, you know, ice cream, this is all sorts of delicious things. A taste of Gan Eden, a taste of paradise. You've got to try their babka, it's a tam fun Gan Eden. It's a taste of paradise. Delicious. Do. Coming up next is, so now we're going to get into a little bit of phrases, you know, here and there, instead of just these one-off words. And I should also remind everyone, or not remind, but remind myself that at the end of this, I have a glossary that I can make available for everyone if you are interested in keeping these words up with yourself. Uh, this is a bitter sibile, and a bitter sibile is a bitter onion quite literally. And why we say party pooper or buzzkill, the Jews are saying you're a real bitter onion. <laughs> Just imagine the face you would make if you bit into an onion like it was a hand fruit. And that's the face that someone makes when they see people enjoying themselves or having fun. Uh, you're a real bitter onion. So this is the person that complains about the music being too loud. This is Homer's dad, and they're supposed to be at Woodstock, and Homer wants to be a hippie, and his dad is a real bitter onion. You can see how he's dressed in a suit. So my neighbor can be a real bitter Sibylla, a real bitter onion. So we're going to kind of have a, there's a, oh, there's chat. I should be paying attention to this. Can we keep politics out of this and ask questions into having a glossary? Okay. I want to keep up with the chat in case there are questions I, I missed. Um, Okay, so keeping with the theme of onions, which is a very Jewish thing, I don't know why. No. Oh, how do I go? You can be Pishin mitzibili treren. Pishin sounds kind of like, okay, pissing. Mit with sibili treren. Pissing onion tears. Oi. And one is pissing onion tears. That means fake crying, false sympathy. In English, for some reason, we say these are crocodile tears. I've never even seen a crocodile. Um, but yeah, pissing onion tears. This is what we say for someone who's really putting on a show of fake sympathy. You know, this would be what it would look like. You know, she shouldn't be civil and a lot of these things work in English as well as in Yiddish. I mean, they work in Yiddish, it's their Yiddish, but these are things that you can kind of incorporate into your English vernacular when you want to really make a, a specific point or impress someone or get someone to leave you alone. Alan and Vinny have entered the waiting room. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Kishin Mitsubishi. So keeping with the onions. Sizvert nit kind sibile. Sizvert nit kind sibile. It's not worth an onion. And this is to refer to anything of low value. Um, onions are, even today, fairly inexpensive. Onions are cheap. And you say, it's not even worth an onion, meaning this has absolutely no value. This is a total piece of whatever. Um, very cheap, very poorly done, poorly made. Not worth an onion. That's that kind sibile. So here we have auctioning off at 40 cents. It's not worth an onion. The cousin of this is es wert nicht kein Petreschke. And a Petreschke is a sprig of parsley. Um, so it's not worth a sprig of parsley, has the same low value of um, an onion. Not to be outdone, 
Bilic v. Borscht. Maybe people recognize Borscht as that wonderful cold soup, sometimes hot soup, but cheap as Borscht. Another thing, beets are usually pretty inexpensive, even today, 40 cents a pound. Very nice. Goes a long way, very healthy. Cheap as Borscht. You know, something that's just really cheap. You know, it's Billy be Borscht to print out a few pages at the library. What does it cost? Eight cents? You know, cheap like Borscht. And if you are interested in the nuts and bolts of Yiddish a little bit, this word V right here in the middle is your, is your like and as word. It's your comparison word. Cheap like Borscht or cheap as Borscht. And no one can ever agree if it's Borscht or Borscht, but that's why there's so many varieties. But I like cold Borscht. And, all right. Here's a word of great controversy that um, we're just trusting is it that this is a real Yiddish word. And this word is Pardust. Pardust. And it may sound like a swear, but it's not. And Pardust means defective or broken. And if we unpack the word for just a minute, um, the word in the middle here, dos, right here, dalid kometz samet, dos, means this. So this far, before it, this far kind of gives it a working verby situation. It kind of makes it feeling like a verb, some kind of motion, some kind of happening. So you can think of it as this, if you want to make up English words. This is totally this. It's broken. It's defective. So it's naming something without naming something. Um, maybe this sentence will be of interest. Turns out the radio I bought at the yard sale was totally farduced. It didn't even work. You know, it's just, it's this. Instead of saying it's that it, it's this. Is that the same far as in far blungeon? The same far, yes. It kind of gives a little, gives us a, a motion. Something's happening with, when, when there's far. A little twist. Good question. All right. Uh, this word is pronounced mamish. And other than being like a beautiful word, like I just think mem mem shin is like, this is a word that I get to say and pronounce and see every day. What a privilege. It's just mem mem shin, where do I even begin? It's just, it's so nice. <laughs> mamish. <laughs> um, and mamish means literally, actually, indeed, really. And people literally use this the way that people literally use it in English in that literally annoying way <laughs> that people just, that's how we talk sometimes. You know, the line at the DMV was so long, I mamish wanted to scream. You know, maybe you'll even say, I mamish was screaming. You know, it's that ironic, literally. But it does actually mean literally. So, you know, um, but it's just the way that it gets used. It kind of turns, turns funny. Or if this isn't your thing, this picture of a shy dog is mamish the cutest thing I've ever seen. So it, with that type of way, you can throw around the word mamish a little bit. And just mem mem shin, it's just, it's so nice. <laughs> Um, only my opinion, then mention. All right, Mamish. Shoin kalta lakshin. Shoin kalta lakshin. The word maybe that people will stick out is lakshin, is saying noodles. So already cold noodles, and this is too little, too late. I mean, the noodles are already cold. Nothing you can do about it. And this idiom implies that reheated noodles are terrible. Not always, but they can kind of be overcooked and gross. Um, but the noodles are already cold, forget about it. Nothing you can do about it. But if noodles aren't your thing, then you can have, oh, here's Lisa eating some cold noodles. But if noodles aren't your thing, then you can say, shoin kalta kave, which is, the coffee's already cold. Too little, too late. And this idiom implies that reheated coffee is terrible, which I really think is true. Reheated coffee is just throw it out. But the coffee's already cold. I'm saying nothing you can do. Forget it. Too late. <clears throat> Moving forward. 
Uh, Agnes Nefesh. Agnes Nefesh is disappointment. It's heartbreak. It's um, maybe in, you had the expectation of a fulfilled desire and it was now denied to you. So heartache, heartbreak, disappointment, um, anguish of the soul, you know, something like that. It's, it's really, really in there. And there's a very beautiful, not beautiful, there's a very poignant gift that we'll examine where Lisa is telling Ralph she doesn't like him like a boyfriend girlfriend on national TV and you can pinpoint the moment where his heart breaks and he is experiencing Agnes Nefesh. She says, Ralph, I don't like you that way. So, ah, Agnes Nefesh. Or, you know, you were, another example is you were studying really hard to get into the advanced group and then after your exam, you're still in level, level one. And you're saying, oh, but I studied so hard and I really thought I got it and oh, Agnes Nefesh, the heartbreak of being put into you know, the lower group. Agnes Nefesh. Nebech. Nebech has a, a couple different uses and mm, they are usually pretty funny. Um, it can be the way to say of like, oh, bummer. I, you know, uh, Nebech, I can't come out tonight. I'm busy. Um, a Neb as a word singular, Neb is kind of like a loser, like a Al Bundy type. Or I could also just be someone who's like rather unfortunate and you're kind of like, it's kind of a pitying situation. Um, and Al Bundy, here he is, he's a real neb. You know, he's real nebish, you know, nebish, people say in English, nebish. So a neb. Or it's in that way of, oh, bummer, regretfully, sorry. Ah, Nebuch, I can't make it to your dance recital. I have to work. Oh, Nebuch, bummer. It's it's mild. It's like, ah, oh, bummer, I can't come. And you can see Elaine doing the little kicks. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about some food-related terms. And nothing would be getting us ready for Shavuot or Shavius, as you want to call it, than talking about dairy. So here we have this word. Milchik. Milchik. And as we know, that just means dairy. And we are also very crucial of, not crucial, sorry, of separating things of milk and meat. And calling something milchik, um, it's saying that it was parv, but it was boring, but it was pretentious. It was parv, but pretentious. Parv meaning bland, boring. It tried to be something more than it could and it failed. Um, think of schlocky theater, maybe. Um, milk, you can describe it as. It tried to be something and failed. Um, set the sights too high and really fell short. Milk. So, more Planet of the Apes spin offs on The Simpsons. It tried and it failed. Not to be outdone is a milker chesed, a dairy kindness. The word chesed, um, as we may all know, to mean good, you know, um, kindness and loving kindness. And in Yiddish, it gets translated as good heartedness, is chesed. Um, it's a word that's kind of hard to, it's easy to recognize maybe, but hard to translate in words. But milker chesed, is a thanks for nothing favor. Um, this is almost in the same idea of like showing called the cock cave and showing called the lakshin. You know, the noodles are already cold, the coffee is already cold. This is the favor that you're like, well, thanks for nothing. The coffee's already cold. So this is a dairy kindness. So I said, thanks for nothing. You know, this is how it works. Um, this is the favor that you, is being usually being done to you, and it's already too late, and you're going to say, oh, they did a military hesed. And it's like, imagine you 
bring your friend a sandwich and it's a corned beef sandwich and they say, but I'm a vegetarian, ironically. Then you're like, oh, thanks for nothing. I really can't do anything with this. You could have checked and asked if I eat this stuff. Um, so it's kind of like a misfired, good intentions maybe, but a misfire on your, um, on your misfire on doing good. So in the same dairy category, we have a meal of ness. And we may recognize the word ness from Hanukkah, from Ness Gadol Hayasham, as to mean miracle. And a milachar ness is a dairy miracle, which is meaning something that is really not that big of a deal. Um, I don't know why dairy always kind of weakens things and makes it even less, less of a greatness, but a milachar ness is like, um, oh, you know, I think my example. Oh dear. Making teenagers depressed is like shooting fish in a barrel. Like, yeah, no big deal. Like, um, of course someone is, you know, a teenager could be depressed, or of course a teenager is moody. It's really not that great out of the ordinary. So if someone is being indecisive and they can't make up their mind and they're, as in English, we'll say hemming and hawing, if they're sitting on the fence. In Yiddish, you just say milk deflation, milk or meat. Like, what is it? What are you? Which way, you know, one way or the other, as things can only go. So this is a statement of kind of impatience when you want someone to just like get with it already. Milk deflation. Think of it as, you know, blank or get off the pot, you know, that type of situation. And you're really just asking milk or meat, which one is it? Make up your mind. So, oh, I can't decide, you know, oh, milk deflation, which one is it? You can only have one. All right. Er sits via matzah baker. He sits around, he sits like a matzah baker. Uh, someone who seemingly sits around all the time, seldom works, maybe once a year baking matzah for Passover. That's the only time you see this person get up. Otherwise, they're just sitting around. So this is someone that's somewhat lazy, much like Homer at work. As it's the matzah baker. This one has got to be Maybe my favorite uh, Yiddish expression, maybe of uh, all time. I don't know. I should maybe have more favorites. Sve Nesim Gayen Tansin. It literally means two corpses going dancing. And figuratively, it means two equally inept, stupid people attempting to do anything together. Um, an example I saw uh, from a book was you know, two tone deaf individuals starting a music school or mm, someone that can't dance and someone that can't sing saying, let's start a band together. Although that happens quite often enough, but it can also mean kind of like two dateless losers, you know, two single guys sitting on the couch eating cookie dough, no date, no phone call. These are just two corpses going dancing. They may see him gay and dancing. So now we're going to try and say some uh, cursing, some light curse words. A doctor zol im darfin. A doctor zol im darfin means a doctor should need him. And if you want to ask yourself, why would a doctor need a person for? A customer for a patient for an autopsy for an experiment who knows but why would a doctor need a person you know it's the opposite it's it's flipped up oh, people should be doctor but oh a doctor needs you reminds me of a joke of uh this guy goes to the doctor and the doctor says what seems to be the problem and the guy says every morning i wake up and i have terrible pain from my arm you know to my leg and the doctor says and you wake up like this every day the man says, yes. And the doctor says, well, that's fantastic. And the man says, how could you say such a thing? I'm in terrible pain. 
and the doctor says, well, I just bought a boat, you know, and I need you to pay for it. So a doctor is all in Darwin. So this is some fresh slang, kind of straight off the uh, the streets. This is oi mem gimel, got in himmel. And this is how you say in Yiddish, OMG, oh my God. And it's just nice to see things spelled out so eloquently of oi mem gimel. And I personally still quite superstitious and I don't spell out that word, got, got in himmel. Himmel is the heavens. Oi mem gimel, got in himmel. It even rhymes. It's great. Oh my God, oi mem gimel. So this is fresh, fresh Yiddish. Oh, that's the program? Oh my God. That went by fast. Um, wow, um, that's the program. Um, does anyone want to talk about anything that we went over or go back to things? Or I thought this would take longer. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I um, thought MS meant truth. MS? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what when growing up we always say MS, like we're not lying to you. It's the truth. Is it how's it spelled though? MS is spelled Aleph Mem Sof. I didn't I, I didn't have that word as an example. Um, oh. but MS does mean truth, truth. Okay. And people come to some say but MS to mean like in truth. And but how you said it in the, in the way you used it, MS, MS, like, yeah, it's true, it's true. And I think what's nice about, that's a really nice um, question because you reminded me how much I like the word emis. Um, and emis, aleph, mem, sof. Aleph is the first letter of our aleph base. Mem is the middle letter of our aleph base. And sof is the last letter of our aleph base. So emis is, you know, truth. And the truth is contained in, entire, in our aleph base. So I just love that it's the first, middle, and last letter of our of our alphabet. I think I got confused with another word you used. It sounded like E N N. Epis. I think epis was the word. Oh, maybe. that is it. Yeah. Yeah. Epis means. Um, oh. Oh yeah. We have a song too. Um, we do have a song. Um, yeah. Epis means like something. Just right. let's say I'm hungry. Give me epis to eat. I don't even care. Fruit. Cheese epis. But epis also means what a, like what a epis, a, you know, epis a class, I hope you're all saying at the end of <laughs> Wow, what a class. <laughs> um, anyone else have anything? Or you have other, you know, if anyone has other associations with these words from their upbringing, their childhood, I'd love to hear them because interesting stuff. There used, well, to be a, there used to be a deli in New York City called Epis Essen. <laughs> wow. That is I funny. Know. I don't know if it's still around. Epis Essen. <laughs> Will we be able to watch this again? Um, I don't retain much. Uh, yeah, I believe um, Yana is streaming it on Facebook Live. And I think from there it can be like downloaded and shared to be rewatched. Wonderful. Um, oh, so we do have a song. All right, we're gonna try and do a song. Yana, how do I pull up the the song? Das is Yiddish. Do I do it? You just did. Yeah, you oh. just did. You can uh, put full screen, please. All right. So this is a song uh, very appreciative of Yiddish. Das ist Yiddish. Das ist unsere Sprache. Mit der Wein und mit der Lach und poschet dieses Azoi Gring. Jeder Wort ist zu tausend, goi ba viele, also ich sich stamm, jedisch hockt an anderen 
Tam Liebes klingt zart und nond, jeder Wort ist dir bekannt. Dossi Siedisch ses mein Spaß mit Tavein und mit Tala und Porsche dieses also ich gring jeder Wort ist unter Sing Dossi Siedisch ses mein Spaß Treft du machst ein Jiddisch Lied und die Wörter sinnen mit, mit a Krewechts und mit a Wei, 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 Euf Jiddisch singt sich es a Zei. Do si Jiddisch, ses mein Spaß, mit a Wei, und mit Allah und Paschet dieses also ich gring jeder Wort ist tut das Ding doch sie sieht dich es ist mein Spaß Nur wie es legt sich auf der Zung tut es alle mal a Zung euch a Welt Yiddish, Yiddish, Yiddish is the best language. Do si Yiddish, says my spark. Mit a vein, oh mit a laugh, oh pashet is a sazoy gring. Yeder word is tuta zing. Do si Yiddish, says my spark. Oh, So I have these lyrics. Novel co-working. That I wanted to share. Um, this is, go, go to live on Facebook. Oh, what happened? Where'd it go? Um, I have the lyrics. Um, it's okay, I can read. I can okay. read you the translation if you okay, would like please. to. Right. It's an easy song. I hope uh, it uh, encourages you to learn more Yiddish. <laughs> Just a second. Because I know Dave can't find it, so I'll find it. How are you going to share the glossary? Um, uh, so we asked people to RSVP to this. Right. And uh, we, for people who send us their emails, we will will share the glossary. And if we don't have it, if you if you didn't RSVP for some reason, I will put my email address, and you can email me for this information. Okay? Sure. Our Great. email. And I can read you the translation of the song. It's a very simple song, but I think it's enjoyable. So this is the translation. Das ist Yiddish. This is Yiddish. Just like that, Yiddish has a flavor. Love sounds soft. Every word is well known. This is Yiddish. It's my language with a, te a tear and with a smile. And it's so easy. Every word is singable. This is Yiddish. This is my language. If you compose a song and the words are tired, uh, they have a krechts and they have a cry. You'll sing it just like that. As you taste the words, you are ready to sing with a tear and with a smile. Yiddish is the prettiest language. So that's the translation of this song. We could also share it with the materials we send to you. Right. Thank you so much for joining. Some oh, of yeah. you know. 
Are mm. we going to have questions or? You can ask questions. Yeah, ask away. Oh, I didn't know if you were. Sure. It. No, no, no. No hard questions. Oh, <laughs> no, they're not. Hard. They're, I, I don't know if you know, I can't remember certain things. My mother spoke Yiddish fluently, like everyone thought she was European, but she wasn't. And she used to say she had several different phrases. And the only one I re actually retained was Du weißt, dass er wird gut wie zum Sonntag. You know, you say flower again? like a cow knows it's Sunday. Have you ever heard that one? No. Could you say it again? Yeah. Flower? Well, my, I don't have uh, good linguistics. Here we go. Oh. Du weißt, dass er wird gut wie from Zuntik. Okay, I hear yeah. it. Yeah, I heard the same expression in Polish. So right. maybe it comes from Slavic language. As a cow should know about things just like you know. What day it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, the other, so that was the one I, I hung on to, but I can't remember how she used to say to me when she'd get really angry. She used to say, if you could drown me in a teaspoon of water, you would. Wow. Like, I can't remember, but it was like a- That's a, harsh. <laughs> yeah, she was a tough cookie. Uh, I, we, had, we were very close, but it was just like, yeah, it was just, I can't remember how she said it, but I didn't know if you had ever heard that one. No, that is cold. <laughs> uh, I think the proof of that, the first phrase you mentioned comes from Polish, like Yana mentioned, is right. because um, a cow wouldn't get milked on Sunday. So that's why a cow would know it was Sunday, because they weren't being milked. But obviously, oh. if it was a Jew, a cow wouldn't, shouldn't get built on a, a Saturday, you know, so that, <laughs> I, think, I think that's the way it came to the language, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I just, she had, she had so many and I don't remember half of them. So can somebody um, answer uh, why I heard um, like a, a, it was a compliment, um, Kenahora or Kanenahora, what's the difference? Um, just they mean the same thing. I feel it's just pronunciation or accent or dialect. Um, Kainahara, um, but they all mean the same thing. It's no evil eye, and it's kind of what we say before we say anything too good. You know, I, like I would say, for example, there's Kainahara 12 students with me in this classroom or um because we don't like to name things that are too good because <laughs> you know um that's great we're still rather a superstitious people right kind of hara no evil eye you know so nothing none of the evil spirits think that you know things are going too well for you to now and take it away from you now that you've named it in the positive and what does um thank you what does um when someone says taka um it, it's it, a friend of my mother's used to just end all of her sentences practically with take. Okay. <laughs> take, I was debating on whether or not to uh, teach take um, because I already had so much material. Um, take is so beautiful. It's such a versatile word. Um, it means really, and it can mean in just in like an acquisitive way, like really, take? It kind of depends on your, you know, the lilting of your voice. If it's a question, Take or take, like really, you know, take, take. You can kind of hear it in the tone sometimes. Mm. And there's a, you know, Jewish people have a lot of nicknames. Um, most of them very good. Um, but one of them is the Am Hatake, the people of the Take. Because people are, you know, we're always ending every sentence with Take, Take, Take. <laughs> so we're just, you can have a whole conversation that's just Take. And what, you know, you're pointing to the rest of it. And it's really, 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 really. And <laughs> that's just how we talk sometimes. Take. And it's kind of used in the affirmative. Like, yeah, he was take there. He was really there. What so is these the are things that I hope that people can start to use in their English, too. The, you know, what is the etymology of take? What language does that come from? I think it comes from Slavic language because I think in we Czech. have Tak and Take. I know in Czech language. you say Take. That's oh, the same word. I may know better than I would. 
about the Slavic languages, yes, <laughs> or, but not everything. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. I really, really enjoyed your class. It wow. just really, really hugged my neshama because Yiddish was my first language and oh. I've lost it since I lost my parents. So thank you so much. I am trying to recover one word that my mother always used and I'm probably completely mispronouncing it. I'm with you all the she, way, what's the word? She would use it um, to describe someone who was refined or gentle. And she would say either they were an idola or an idola, I can't remember the word. An idol, yeah. How would I, you pronounce it? An idol. Just an, idol, not idola? Yana, would you say idol or idol? It means exactly how you described it. To, of a, to be idle or to be an idler or idler, depending on the dialect. To so be either a, is correct. Idler or idler. Yeah. No, yes, not thank and, you. And, and you the meaning agree? is the same. It's like a nice, idler. gentle person. Mm -hmm. A gentle person, right? Not a gentile person. A gentle <laughs> <kind>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Are you going to offer this again? Uh, with God's help, I will make another program and maybe do this something like this every month or however people want it. Um, there's no shortage of Yiddish words and, and lovers of Yiddish. Mm -hmm. And I just love Yiddish so much. So I love sharing it. And I'm so happy that it, it um, was a, um, something for, you know, something epist for you in the Shama. Oh, I loved it's, it. Um, it's, it's tomorrow, what are we doing? You know, you. really wonderful. I feel at the, at the center of this that these letters that we're using in Yiddish, um, we are learning Torah. And if this isn't Torah, then I'm wasting my time. So I really want to elevate Yiddish and Jewish learning and these letters and speaking and being Jewish as a way of saying of, of being the in and doing Torah. So did you thank you and have Sorry. a good young tip. Yeah, happy Shvius, everyone. Happy Shavuot. I hope it's did very... Your parents, did both your parents speak Yiddish? Uh, Yiddish is my dad's first language. And he still knows some Yiddish. Um, and my mother doesn't speak much Yiddish. Um, but now I guess I speak Yiddish. So <laughs> it skips a generation. Something happened there. Yeah. But, yeah. Great. It was great. Thank you. And if you have, if you want to get in touch with Yana, the organization, we have Yiddish yoga, we have Yiddish interviews, we have Yiddish music. There's uh, all kinds of cultural events and ed edutainment, you know, educational ed ed entertainment, um, classes for all levels with God's help, um, reading circles. So definitely follow it on Facebook or the website, there's a lot of cool stuff to get involved in and to enjoy. Um, especially if you're coming back to Yiddish or coming to Yiddish for the first time, um, we just want to make sure that you have a really Hamish or really welcoming environment to, you know, to, to experience this language and to enjoy this language and to treat it as if it's your own. Um, sure, thank you. And uh, let us know if you are in need of any specific programming. We can accommodate everybody. Uh, I post you our email address and our website, link to the website, so you can be in touch with us. Oh, and thank if you, you want the glossary, um, write in, and I'll know who to send the glossary to. And that would just be a shared Google thing that you can look at or print out. And it will just have the Yiddish and then the, um, the English. This question just I, I, off topic a little bit. Oh, um, is is Yana's name taken from the dance, and and is it a common name, the bazorka? Well, actually, um, my father uh, or my father's father, my grandfather, changed this his name. I don't oh. know the real name to the typical Polish name. Oh. Uh, so this is like he always jokes that. Um, such a common name, the dogs should have it. <laughs> <laughs> Yerky. 
<laughs> yes, it's from the, there are two uh, origins. One is a dance, mazurek, and the other one is a cake, also mazurek. Ooh. So very, very Polish name. You can't be more Polish and you can't have <laughs> a more Polish name than this one. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, Jana, did you have any relatives that were like plumbers? From a no. long <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody, right. you see, that's an immigrant thing. Right. And okay. My family, everybody but me stayed in Poland. Oh, so wow. there are no plumbers. Uh, okay. <laughs> nobody had to. Because I remember uh, Mr. Mazur when I was growing up, my mother would, um, <laughs> but you know, could be common. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've heard lots of stories about Polish plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't yet met any, but. <laughs> did anyone else grow up with um, a, a, a curse in the house, uh, Gay and Dreher? Oh yeah. My my mother said that to my father probably daily and many times a day. I forgot what it meant though. Oh, go to hell. Oh, okay. Go in the go, go in the earth. Go to <laughs> the earth. I my partner about that. He heard that growing up a few times, so I won't say oh. <laughs> See, my mother used to say gay avec, gay avec. Oh, what does that mean? Go away. Oh. Go away. And how shine it. Yeah, I, I always wondered what that really literally meant. Hot me in China. Don't hit my tea kettle. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because the China is from China because the Chinese tea is a tea. Uh, you know, don't bang my tea. Well, the China is what you're boiling the water in. So imagine when something's boiling, the top starts to rattle and make a noise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the less water is in the China the louder and more annoying the noise. Right. So that's how, you know, the less there is, the more annoying and louder it gets. So how can you kind of, you know, don't bang like an empty tea kettle, that annoying, you know, empty whale. So oh. the, the way it was, my, my grandmother explained it to me was that Hawk was like chopping something. And so hawking the, she would say, don't hawk me, the China meant don't, bang on the tea kettle with a knife. That hot means, can mean hit or chop or hack. It sounds very, yeah, as a hitting. Well, I grew up with it, as, as you said, you know, it's, it's annoying. Stop, you know, stop annoying me. Uh, there's also, you know, uh, Zeigesund is really oh, interesting. Because yeah. Zeigesund, you know, if you tell a German person Zeigesund, they're going to say, oh, well, well, thank you, very nice. But in Yiddish, Zeigesund has taken on this whole other meaning of, you know, Live and be well, like go away, you're bothering me. All right, go. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it also just means goodbye. If you're very oh. being polite about it. But it's like, all right, go, go, fine, leave me alone. Zeigesund, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean <laughs> be healthy. Um, so my mother used to say something, and I don't, can't even remember, but it was about do something. It started with Zygazun, but it ended with live to be an old grandmother. Are you familiar mm. with that? Has anybody heard that? Um, it was, mom, she also, she always used to say, Gesundheit zu wachsen, lechel not the babichka zu wachsen, or something like that. I don't know that I'm saying it. That's how she said it. Oh, you should live like the Lubavitch or Rebbitzin. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, is that what it was? Some, some kind Wait, of what was it? What does that mean? What I heard was like, you should live like some kind of Rebbitzin, like the wife of a rabbi. That's what I heard. Is that I could be wrong. I could always be wrong. I'm very open to being wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Is that for length of life or quality of life? <laughs> um, well, it's kind of in Yiddish or in Judaism, it's kind of both. We're like, the, you know, you should live, we have lots of, you should live so long and that type of stuff. And that's why we're saying, you know, biz 100, to 120, because that's how old Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher lived to. So 120 has this like idealized lifespan. But yeah, I think the idea is that your life as, you know, the life that we really consider to be living is when you're able to perform mitzvahs and to do and to learn. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a matter of living um, you know, a long life without Torah and mitzvahs, because that's no kind of life at all. So it's as long as you're able to perform mitzvahs and, and learn. But 
I'm always open to being wrong to other opinions too. Um, <laughs> but if you like this program, feel like you bring it up again. So I just, yeah, I love how everyone has, you know, not everyone, but people have things from the childhood and then I love the overlap or how, oh, you said it like this and then we said it like this and, you know, no one, no, no, you know, no one understands anyone. Um, no. Um, I'm trying to think, I can't really remember things, uh, strong things from my childhood. Uh, I think Yiddish was spoken above our heads or around us rather than to us to be right. maybe the secret language. And no, oh, children don't speak Yiddish. Sure. Right. But now they do. So thank God. <laughs> Well, I've enjoyed the, the, your style of teaching too. I it wish was, I could retain it, but um, oh, anyway. I'm just thrilled that you think I have a style of a teacher. <laughs> I'm a new teacher, so I'm always very concerned of. It was great. Am I effective? Am I, is the joke getting met? You know, and to know the audience is important and just yelling at my computer. And it's nice to know <laughs> I'm getting a, re a reaction. Um, yeah. And if anyone just wants to, just, uh, what do you call it? You know, get involved with Yana. We have events we can do reading and you know, all types of stuff like that. So Thank you just, very yeah. much. Thank you. Thanks. So, yeah, it's been a pleasure and it's been an honor and I'm really happy that it, you're coming back to Yiddish, that my face is the first one that you're seeing. Um, <laughs> I'm very happy to be warming and, you know, warm and welcoming you. Um, well, I have a problem. I have a specific problem. I think um, I'm, a, I'm I'm pretty much a klezmer, like almost full time. And after I finish performing something, someone always comes up, takes their takes my my face in their hands, and says long phrases. And you know, of course, I, I just nod and and you know, shame them dunk and all of that. But I have no way to to respond more than uh, that and um i'm trying to catch up okay we can i can I can, you want something like complimentary to say back and things like that mm -hmm. get the, you want to get the joke or get what they're saying right right um i guess something that i can advertise you know um that i am a class another class that i am teaching me personally if you like me is my style is i'm teaching an olive face class which is um, an alphabet class where we just start from very, it's called Yiddish from Voracious, Yiddish from the very beginning. And we learn alphabet um, sort of in a similar Simpson Z style. And we start with vowels and we add consonants and get to a point where by the first class, you're reading a Yiddish sentence. Um, the class goes for six weeks. The first class is free. And then after that, it's $15 a class for five weeks. And at, by the end of it, you would be able to read this presentation. Um, mm. So if that's something that people are interested in, uh, the idea is that, you know, as one session will end, we'll start another session so that there's people that can always get a fresh, uh, a fresh lesson. Um, and that kind of works just letter by letter and we build a vocabulary from, from nothing, you know, from voracious, from Genesis, from the beginning. Um, but I think Thank if you. the interest is there, I would definitely try another one of these you know, casual, laid back type of, you know, Yiddish after dark type of situations or, you know, teach. <laughs> you know, like this. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go. All so right. Everyone Thank should have a, a nice, a nice uh, Shvias, a nice Shavuot, Shavuot, and stay up all night watching monster movies or learning or whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. 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 B